Hi, Dan. Good morning. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, for those of you that don't know Dan, uh, he's the chief, excuse me, the chief strategy officer for SPM Marketing. I think most of you probably know SPM Marketing, but for those of you that don't, they are a full service marketing agency. Um, I believe, and you'll have to tell me, Dan, but I think Modern Healthcare has named you an agency of the year, a best place to work. So in addition to being friends of Writer Girl, um, you're a great group of fun, creative people doing very smart work um, in this space. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, well, thank you. And you're hired as our PR consultant. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> you know, we're here to do our tips in 10 minutes. So for the next 10 minutes, we're going to get Dan's expertise on communicating to Generation X um, in, in the workplace and, and those that are making healthcare decisions. I'm a Gen X, so I will be a little bit of a sounding board for Dan. Maybe a good place to start would be for you to just kind of give us an overview of the different generations that are making healthcare decisions today and what makes each one unique. Sure. Thanks so much, Kristen. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this. this yeah, I'm so happy you're here. A lot of fun. So when it comes to generations in healthcare decision making, there are three generations that we primarily need to think about. The first is the oldest generation, the baby boomers. Uh, so these are people born between, or that right now are between the ages of 56 and 75 years old. And uh, there's about 70 million of them. Uh, out in the population. The baby boom generation was the largest generation until a few years ago. Um, the unfortunate reality is that there are fewer and fewer of them mm -hmm. every day. Uh, so these are patients who are in, you know, like call the fourth quarter of life uh, and are using, you know, probably healthcare the most intensively that, that they ever will. Um, and they also came of age in the, you know, in the 60s and 70s. Uh, the, the youngest generation that gets a lot of attention are the millennials. And so, you know, these are people who are between 25 and 40 years old. Uh, and they are the largest single generation in America right now, a little over 73 million of those people. And they're just starting their healthcare journey. You know, they're just beginning to, you know, get married, start families, and, you know, really deal more with healthcare for their kids than they are for healthcare with them, for themselves. And they, you know, came of age, you know, in the 2000s, you know, often people say like, this is the Facebook generation, although no millennial would tell you that they grew up using Facebook, but, you know, they, the first generation who really grew up with the internet as a staple part of their life. And then in between them, kind of the Jan Brady syndrome is, uh, <laughs> are the, is Generation X. The forgotten and, you know, generation, the right? The forgotten generation, yes. exactly. I feel you know, so the, neglected. <laughs> exactly, exactly right. And so, yeah, we're between 40 and 55 years old. And there's only about 65 million of us. So we are definitely smaller than the boomers and uh, than the millennials. But what is interesting is that it's projected by about uh, 2028 that Gen Xers will surpass uh, the boomers in terms of the size of the generation as more and more boomers you know, um, you know, pass away. So increasingly uh, more important uh, generation. And what we like to say, and what's important to think about the, the, the Gen, X, Gen Xers is that these are again, be people between their 40s and 50s we're just starting to bend the curve and in the prime of their healthcare consumption uh, decision-making lives. And therefore, these are people who are, are really thinking about healthcare for themselves, really for the first time, seriously. This generation too, also um, more of that sandwich generation, are they tending to care more for their aging parents and their children, or is that more of the boomer generation? No, you're absolutely right. And that is another- Then that's a complication too, in terms of what's on their minds and- Precisely. Um, one of my partners on, on this project refers to the Gen Xers as the triple threat generation, you know, because they're making healthcare decisions for themselves, healthcare decisions for their parents. And we're old enough that we have kids who are just starting their healthcare journeys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're turning to us for advice and information on how to make healthcare decisions as well. Uh, so in all three cases, you know, how this generation thinks influences healthcare providers across a wide spectrum of, of ranges. It's really interesting. And I think one of the defining characteristics of Generation X is that 
during the time that you and I were in college was the time when women surpassed men and getting college degrees. And so not just the fact that there's merely more women than men in the overall generation, but the role of women in the workforce and the role of women as um, business leaders is really driven by Generation Xers. And so people who are making decisions for their companies, as well as decisions for their families, are largely Gen Xers. Uh, and that's an important thing to think about when you're talking about health insurance benefits that a company might offer, policy towards healthcare and leave that a company might offer. Those are decisions that are making being made more and more by college educated Gen X women uh, than anybody else. That's interesting. And probably in homes where both parents work or both individuals work. And so there's time constraints and things like that as well. That's also a really interesting point. One of the great defining characteristics of Generation X, and you probably had this experience, somewhere around 1980 was where the lines crossed, where households had just the father working you know, versus a two-income family. It was right around 1980 when more households had both parents working than just the dad working. And that was very symbolic of the change that was growing up and how you and I experienced life by seeing both of our parents work and having to be, you know, more fend for ourselves when we got home from school, you know, and kind of being raised on that and influencing how we approach our problems going forward as adults. Yeah, so we're, we're managing careers, we're managing our kids, we're managing our home, we're managing our parents, we're managing to have um, hopefully some, some personal free time and, and hobbies in our life. So we're a busy generation, it sounds like. Absolutely. A lot, a lot going on. So what are some key practices that you would suggest then? I think we've kind of touched on them, but if you had to summarize like some best practices or some recommendations in terms for healthcare marketers to communicate to to us, to our generation? Sure, so there's there's one bit of setup and then I'll jump into that. The first is there's great research that was done that shows that if you think across the span of your life and you're gonna spend $100 on healthcare in the course of your life, by the time you turn 40, you've only spent about $20. You know, So in the first 40 years of your life, you just don't use a lot of healthcare. Um, and then by the time you hit age 65, you've spent about 50% and then you spend the rest after you turn 65. So in that period between the ages of 40 and 65 is when you're really making a lot of those important decisions about healthcare. Like you've never needed a cardiologist before. You've never needed a you know, gastroenterologist before, whatever it might be. So you're starting to make those decisions in that time space. And that's one of the reasons Gen X is the most important generation to be thinking about right now. Because once you hit age 65, you've got doctors. You know, you've got relationships, you've been dealing with things for years. And so if I'm a healthcare marketer, really hard to get somebody who's 65 years old to change their doctor, mm -hmm. to change the health system that they have a relationship. There's too much inertia built up. So in that, you know, 40 to 65 year age range is when you're really going to make those connections that are going to be important to the physician and the health system for years to come. So that's one of the reasons Gen X is so important right now. Yeah. So how, so how do you connect with them, right? Remember, this is the first generation that's really a, the self-directed healthcare consumer. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about your parents, my parents, my grandparents, they never challenged their doctor's advice. There was no internet where they could go and look things up on their own and research things on their own. Gen Xers came of age with a skeptical attitude about the world around them and the ability to do a lot of research and form their own opinions. Mm -hmm. And so apply that is healthcare market. So the first thing we would say is that Gen Xers research shows they'll respect your authority as an expert, but don't expect them just to take your word for it and blindly do what you say. Mm -hmm. So they want to see the data. Health Gen Xers are ex, are expressly interested in show me the proof. You know, you say you're the best. Why are you the best? You mm -hmm. say that you're a good choice for me. Why are you a good choice for me? Give me that information and let me form my own opinion, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, unique to Gen X. And the other thing that they would say is, oh, and by the way, don't expect me to just take your word for it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to other people. So yeah. the other thing that we give advice for is Gen Xers love reading reviews. Gen Xers love collaborating with peers and hearing from peers. So like testimonials from like patients. You know, mm -hmm. I'd love to, if I needed um, surgery, you know, for a knee replacement, 
I want to see a 54 year old runner who's had that operation. I want to talk to them. I want to hear their story. So they want to see those, those testimonials as a way to validate you know, what they might be thinking about mm -hmm. themselves. What I would say is this generation also is interested in healthcare marketing. This is the generation that came of age with healthcare marketing. You, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. th th pharmaceutical marketing didn't exist for our parents' generation. Sure. You know, healthcare system marketing. So it is valuable to them. It is one way that they get information. And when we do research around this, um, they tell us that advertisements for hospitals help me make decisions. Mm -hmm. So there is a reason to market to them and they are using all platforms. We still watch television. We still read newspapers. We still consume offline and online media in almost equal populations. And so in terms of tactically, it's good to market to this population and it's good to use a full spectrum of media channels to connect with them. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. I mean, we're consuming content in, in every facet of our life. And um, I always use the expression, you know, human beings are doing, human beings do business with human beings with that they know, like, and trust. And it's, exactly. you know, we have to get to know each other and then we have to like each other and then ultimately we'll, we'll earn each other's trust. And it sounds like the Gen Xers are very much of that thinking, you know, I mean, it's let, let's get to know each other and, and let's, I really want to, you know, feel like I like you and then maybe I'll trust you. And you know, we were all latchkey kids too. A lot of us were. So we have maybe a little bit of that like independent kind of skepticism. You know, we were fighting the world on our own for a long time. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so using that approach in terms of how we make healthcare decisions too, seems like it makes a lot of sense. So our 10 minutes have already gone flown by. So we've, we've covered um, some really good information here. If anyone has any questions, um, we'll be sure to leave Dan's contact information um, in this posting. So you have that if you want to reach out, mine as well. Um, so we'll be happy to jump on any call or answer any other questions. But thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks. much, Kristen.